Welcome to Villegas Patents. In this tutorial, I will show you step by step how to make the sugar plant corsage. This timeline piece will enhance your curve and give you a beautiful garment to wear on many occasions. The sugar plant corsage pattern is a downloadable product. This allows you to start sewing immediately after you purchase. The pattern comes in sizes 34 till 46 and can be printed in A4 and US letter. Below is the link to download the pattern and sewing instructions. As main fabric, I will use a beautiful raspberry crepe with patterns on it. It has almost any elasticity, but you can choose any fabric you like. To line the inside of the corsage, I will use a cupro lining, very soft and silky. To stabilize my corsage, I will use a soft interfacing which will give my main fabric a better hold without making it too stiff. You can also decide not to stabilize your garment at all. It depends on the finish you want to achieve. I have to say the corsage requires many materials, but I will tell you which ones you can skip. We we'll start with the bias tape. You can buy one or make your own following the further instructions. This is actually a pre-folded bias tape. If you buy it, Make sure it matches the main fabric colors. We also need a gross grain ribbon. It needs to be between 1.5 till 2 cm wide. Next, we have the underwire channeling, which has an opening for the bra underwire. The bra underwire is an optional item. It makes a nice bite shape, but it's not necessary. For my pattern, I need the size one-hander. Check the sewing instructions to know more. The bonin is also an optional item. Mine is 0.6 cm wide. If you don't want to sew the bonin, you don't have to buy the gross grain ribbon. I recommend purchasing the foam to give the cup more support. Mine is about 0.6 cm thick. We also need interfacing or fusible tape to reinforce the top of the corsage. And of course, sewing thread to match the color of the fabric. I bought 100 meters from Gutterman. To fasten the corsage, you have two options. Option one, a hook and eye tape. And option two, a metal zipper. Read the instructions to know how to adjust the pattern to work with the zipper. For my sample, I will use the hook and eye tape. First, print the first corsage and flounce pages and measure the control box placed at the top of the page. The box must be 5 times 5 cm or 1 inch wide and 1 inch length. If the measurements are correct, you can print the remaining pages of the pattern. Refer to your sewing manual for more information on printer settings. 
all pattern pieces by placing a light gray box. They are connected to other pattern pages by the alphabetical characters placed along the gray box. You can type all pages together horizontally and cut out each pattern piece later. All pattern pieces have a 1 cm seam allowance, as indicated by the black dashed lines. The pattern pieces also have notches. Continue to cut out all the pattern pieces. The pattern also includes a grain line, which must be aligned with the lengthwise grain. All the pieces must be cut twice, except for the front piece, which must be cut on fold. On each pattern piece, you will find important information such as the pattern name, size, piece name, and the number of pieces you need to cut from each fabric. Interfacing is optional, so it appears between parentheses. Some pieces have notches along the top edges. These are marked to distinguish the top edges from the bottom edges and make the process less confusing. Now you are ready to assemble the flounce pattern. The flounce also have a single allowance. The single allowance is 0.5 cm at the hem and 1 cm at the waistline. All sizes are included in one pattern. You will need to cut this piece twice. Stabilizing with interfacing is optional. After taking your measurements, cut along the cutting line. My pattern is a size 40. main fabric. I want my corsage to have some structure, but you may decide not to stabilize yours at all. To make the process easier and faster, I recommend pressing the interface into the left side of the fabric before cutting the pieces. Fold your fabric and place all the body pieces on it. Cut the fabric, leaving enough space around. You can also place a pin to distinguish the right side of the fabric. 
place the interfacing on fold under the fabric and cut the same amount of interfacing. Go to your ironing board and press the interfacing, taking your time to make sure the glue dots melt onto the fabric surface. Fold your fabric left side up and pin all pattern pieces in place. Remember to place the front piece directly on the fold. For my pattern, I opted to place the right side up so I could better control the alignment of the pattern pieces to the pattern of my fabric. If you decide to work with a metal zipper, you will need to adjust the back pattern piece by removing the single allowance at the center back. You will still have one centimeter single allowance to sew your zipper. Otherwise, cut all pattern pieces as shown. Don't forget to mark the notches. On the front piece, I recommend marking a notch in the center front. Fold your fabric and cut two pieces of flounce. Lining. 
Now it's time to cut the lining. For your lining, I am placing the right side inside. I also like to place a piece of paper underneath to make it easier to cut. Pin all the body pieces, positioning the front piece on the fold. Now that you have all your pieces cut out, I want to show you something about the cup notches. As you see, you have a cup piece named BU2. This piece is the one closer to the side seam. The BU1 is closer to the center front. Here you have double notches to differentiate them. The next step is to make your own bias tape. You must fold your fabric with the left side facing up. I always make my bias 3 cm wide. You must cut the lining on the bias, which means it must be cut at a 45 degree angle. I use a rotary cutter to speed up the process. Align the 45 degree line on the cross grain. I make the first cut, then cut a few strips. To join the tapes, place the corners right to right. It must look like a V. Then pin the corners together. You will need to join many tapes together until you have about 3 meters. Stitch the tapes, then reduce the seam to 0.5 cm and press them flat. Continue to press open or to one side. If you are working with lining or cotton, I recommend pressing them open. Foam cups. Before cutting the foam cups, you must remove the seam allowance. Start by marking the notches.
Then trim the seam allowance. Trace the shape of the cut pieces on the foam and mark the notches. You can also mark the top seam with an arrow. Cut all cut pieces, but don't snip in the foam. The next step is to reinforce the corsage from the left side. You must reinforce the top edges of the corsage using the 1 cm interfacing tape. You must also reinforce the top edges. If your corsage is not stabilized, you may need to reinforce these seams to prevent the stretching. Include the center back seam. Press the 1 cm tape to the left side of the fabric. Now that you have reinforced the top edges, it's time to overlock all vertical seams. Don't overlock the center back seam. Next, pin the front piece to the front middle pieces, right sides together. Continue by pinning the front side pieces to them. Also pin the back pieces to the back side pieces.
finish by pinning the cups together, matching the notches on the inside of the cups. Stitch all seams with a 1 cm seam allowance. Make a sewing test to adjust the thread tension. Continue by closing the side seams also with a 1 cm seam allowance. Once the seams are closed, press them flat, then press them open. Continue by attaching the caps to the tops. The tops have a mark that indicates the center front and also a mark in the center that must match with the caps in line. Sew the seam with a 1 cm seam allowance. Now, search and press the seams upwards. The lining must be sewn in the same way as the main fabric.
The only difference is that the seams are first closed and then overlocked. Press the seam flat and then towards the center back. Then join the top pieces to the caps and search. Press the seams upwards. Once the main fabric and lining caps are sewn, you need to attach the fabric caps to the lining caps. Place both pieces right sides together and stitch at 0.7 cm along the top edge. Finish this step by pressing the seams to the lining. Now you need to sew the foam caps together. Since they have no single allowance, you will need to sew them together with zigzag stitches to avoid bulking. Start sewing the caps together and add the tops later. Set your sewing machine to zigzag stitches and taste to make sure the thread tension is correct.
Finish this step by pressing the foam caps. If you find that the undercap seams are uneven, reshape them. You will need to hide the zigzag stitches using the underwire channeling. Start by sewing the tape on the cap seams and continue by sewing the tape along the seam that joins the caps to the tops. Now you need to attach the fabric caps to the foam caps. Flex the foam caps inside the fabric caps, making sure the center from notches match. The side with the underwire channeling goes to the lining. Mark 1 cm from the outside edges and pin the foam to the main fabric to check if you still have 1 cm space between the edges of the foam caps and the fabrics. Adjust if necessary. Now you need to attach the foam caps to the fabric caps at the seam line. Turn the fabric caps to the left or wrong side, the fabric must be facing up. Place the foam cap with the left side up, the side without the underwire channeling and pin the foam over the fabric seam line, leaving 1 cm on the outside edges.
Then, sew as close to the foam edges as possible, about 1 mm. This will secure the foam to the fabric seam line and preventing it from protruding. As you can see, doing this step gives you a little bit overlap that makes the lining invisible from the right side. Continue by closing the undercap seams. To do this, pin the fabric to the foam cap to check that the fabric is still 1cm larger than the foam. Perform this step on a round surface. And also make sure the seams match. Then pin the line into the foam. Avoid doing this. Trim the excess lining. Finish this step by closing the undercap seam at 1 cm, taking care not to sew through the foam. You may need to push the foam away for easy sewing. Now it's time to sew the gross grain ribbon to the seams. You can skip this step if you don't want a boning. Make sure the ends are straight. Then place the ribbon on the left side of the bodice, center on the seam allowance and pin it down, repeating this with all seams. In my sample, the boning is 0.6 cm wide, which means the resulting tunnel must be 0.6 cm wide or even a little more. You can move the pins to the right side of the fabric for easy top stitching. Using the seam line as reference, top stitch on both sides of the seam. 0.3 cm to one side and 0.3 cm to the other.
finish this step by pressing the seams flat. Now it's time to connect the lining and fabric. Place the lining and fabric right sides together and pin at the center back seams. Stitch and overlock the seams at 1 cm. Continue by pressing the seams flat and then towards the lining. Finish by pressing the center back seam to hide the lining. Pin the lining to the main fabric at the waist making sure the seams match. Hook and eye tape. Now you need to attach the hook and eye tape to the center back seams. Keep in mind that the hooks will be placed on the right side of the corsage and the eyes will be on the left side when worn. First, you need to see if there is an overlap or underlap by closing the tape. In my case, there is a 0.3 cm underlap on the eye tape. which means my hook tape will be sewn 0.3 cm away from the center back seam. To attach the tape to the bodies, you will need to leave 0.5 cm in allowance above the first hook and eye. Now, I wanted to take you in the future. This is what the finished corsage looks like. As you can see, if you leave only 0.5 cm above the first eye, you will have a raw edge at the neckline that needs to be bar tack. To avoid this, instead of leaving 0.5 cm in allowance, you can leave 1 cm and also align the tape directly at the body's neckline. The hook tape will remain with 0.5 cm in allowance and will be placed 0.5 cm from the body's neckline. We are back where we live. Then we continue by cutting the tape 0.5 cm above the first hook and eye. Place the eye tape directly on the center back seam. The top of the tape must be placed 0.5 cm below the body's neckline. Place the hook tape on the inside lining, also 0.5 cm below the neckline and 0.3 cm from the center back seam.
Now, edge stitch the tapes to the bodies. You can change the upper thread to a thread that matches the color of the tape. Flounce. Now we need to finish the flounce before attaching it to the bodies. Start by closing the center front seam, play both pieces right to right and pin them together. Sewing the seam at 1 cm. Then overlock the seam and press it to left or right, it makes no difference. To finish the hem, I will use a technique called Hong Kong Seam Finish. The first step is to place your via tapes on the flounce hemline, right sides together, with the raw edge lined up, and pin the tape in place without stretching it. The second step is to place the seam under the presser foot and sew 0.5 cm from the raw edge. I will use my sewing machine foot as a guide because it is exactly 0.5 cm wide. The third step is to turn the bias to the right by pressing. The fourth step is to wrap the bias around the raw edges and press. The fifth step is to secure the bias using a technique called stitching in the ditch. To do this, place the right side of the fabric facing up and a stitch on the seam line. This makes the stitches invisible.
Then trim the excess wires. The sixth and final step is to make the bias invisible from the right side, which is why we need to close the Hong Kong seam. To do this, turn the tape inwards, press and then top stitch at 0.5 cm. Finish this technique by pressing the hem well. Once the flounce hem is finished, you need to attach it to the body's waistline. Make sure the body center front notch matches the flounce center front seam and that the width is spread evenly. Sew so this seam at 1 cm. Afterward, you can simply overlock the seam or finish it using the Hong Kong technique. Follow the steps 1 till 5 as described at the flounce hem. At the center back seam, Shorten the bias and turn it towards the flounce. Top stitch to hold them in place. Boning. To insert the boning into the gross grain ribbon tunnel, melt the end with a lighter. Make sure the boning is completely cold before inserting. When the boning touches the waist, make a mark directly at the raw edge of the neckline. Then, make a new mark 1.2 till 1.5 cm below and cut through. Don't forget to melt the boning. Do this with all seams and press flat. Neckline. To finish the neckline, we need to use the Hong Kong seam finish. 
the same as we did for the flounce hem. Place the tape on the neckline, right to right, leaving about 3 cm of tape at the center back seams. You don't need to leave extra length at the under cap seams. Stitch 0.5 cm from the raw edge. Press the tape to the right and secure it by stitching in the ditch. Trim the excess bias. At the center back seam, shorten the bias to 1 cm and hide it before closing the seam. Top stitch with the right side facing up. Be careful not to sew on the boning or your needle will break. Finish by pressing the neckline. Now you need to close the center front seam of the neckline. Turn the fabric and lining right sides together and stitch at 1 cm. Then press the seam to the lining. Caps. Finally, it's time to attach the caps to the bodies. Attach the lining to the fabric by placing pins around the undercap seams. Continue by stay stitching the seam at 0.5 cm. Press the undercap seams flat. You might find that the lining is larger than the fabric, in which case you only need to reduce the lining. The next step is to attach the caps to the bodies. I recommend attaching the top edges first. Place the pins on the cap seams. You can also snip into the body single loans if necessary.
Now stitch exactly at 1 cm. Please avoid sewing through the foam. Continue by pressing the undercap seams upwards. The underwire channeling will only be stitched on the seam allowance. You will need to align the other edge over the cup seam line. Leave about 2 cm of tape at each end. Sew the tapes to the undercap seam allowance by stitching directly onto the channeling stitches. Press the undercap seams upwards. You also need to reduce the undercap seam allowance so it doesn't show beneath the underwire channeling. Then place a few pins to hold the underwire channeling in place. Turn your corsage to the right and top stitch 0.5 cm from the undercap seams. I recommend you to top stitch with the right side facing up. Use your hands to pull the seams apart and make sure the foam caps are also sewn. Rework if necessary. Insert the bra underwire into the underwire channeling.
The bra underwire gives the pads a great shape and hold them in place. Look at the difference. The last step is to close the underwire channeling edges. Shorten them to 1 cm and bar tack. I will do some buttonhole stitches instead. I don't like the bar tack so much because it could damage my fabric and also the stitches are shown from the right. Finish your beautiful corsage by pressing it well. I know it was a long journey to make this piece, but you know what? You can be proud of yourself for taking the time and patience to make a perfectly made garment that you will be proud of forever.